We're going live. Guys, welcome to the show. We're here again, Tales from the Sand, back from Dubai. And today I'm welcoming Captain America, a man that is synonymous with Eagles rugby, both sevens and fifteens. Todd Clever, welcome. How are you? Yeah, very good. Very good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. It's a, it's a crazy time, but we're excited to talk about uh, perhaps a, a simpler time today. That's it. I'm always uh, always excited to talk about rugby or, or go down memory lane and, and, and express uh, you know, all, the, all the fun times I've had uh, playing in all around the world. Fantastic. Let me ask you, what was the, uh, when was the first year you played for the Eagles on, on the World Series? Because I think it was 2003 you made your debut with 15s, but when was, uh, when was the Sevens debut? Yeah, just the, just the Hong Kong year after that. So 2004, made my debut in Hong Kong. Okay, and you, and you, you joined us in Dubai in 2008. What was, uh, what was the World Series like when you, when you first started playing for the Eagles? How different was it then to how it is now? Yeah, I mean, first first glance is probably uh, you know the athlete. You know, now now we're dealing with Olympians and you know fully professional, you know, amazing and and I mean they were great athletes back then, but it wasn't uh, wasn't taken as serious as it was you know now. And the professionalism has really really notched up. Um, when I first started playing in 2004 with the USA Sevens, we weren't a full core team, so we only went to three tournaments, sometimes four tournaments a year. So, you know, it was Hong Kong, uh, Wellington, and we hosted a tournament. Um, and then, so, then we added a couple more, added a couple more. And then finally, when we, uh, we got a core, core member, uh, went out to Dubai 2008. Um, and then that was, that was just, you know, one of the most amazing experiences. And then, and then playing in the, in the World Cup as well, uh, the year after in, in Dubai in 2009. What are your memories of Dubai when you first came out here in 2008? Because it's a city that looks different every year. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, th that's uh, that's exactly right. I mean, you don't know where downtown is. There's so many different parts of downtown, and skyscrapers going up, and and uh, you know, new hot spots. And I mean, you know, we always had a great time finding great restaurants, and that's not easy. That's not uh, hard to do because there's such great food and dining there. Um, you know, nightlife is awesome. You know, from museums to to beaches to everything else. Uh, you know, camel rides out in the desert. So um, every time I've, I've been out there, I've always tried to experience something new. Every time I go, you know, anywhere in the world, I always want to, you know, embrace the cultural, culture and experience the different foods and, and, and do some sort of uh, excursion, um, you know, not, not really pleasing my coaches whenever I'm, you know, jumping off of, uh, you know, uh, bridges with bungee jumping or, or, you know, riding fast cars on the racetrack or, or, or camels that are, that are trying to bite me. But uh, <laughs> But we always, uh, always have a good time, good time doing it. Well, we've got to come on to some of that, but I'd like to like to start a little bit closer to home. One of my favourite stops on the series was, was San Diego, and uh, love the Gaslam District, love Petco, and, and our very good memories of that. What are your memories of, of San Diego? You must, as a as a as a Californian, that must be uh, must be good memories from that. Yeah, no, it was uh, you know state, playing in uh, at Petco Park in, in the baseball stadium was uh was was really cool and i mean the hotels were connected to that park and bars and restaurants were all there people were in and out um and and i just think it was just a little bit before its time before rugby's really peached uh, uh peaked up uh on in popularity of viewership and you know sort of educating so um you know they uh the people that w went and 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 then went to vegas and then it's in la you know, they're, they're always asking for it to come back. And even the city, you know, wanted to come back, the stadium, uh, just because I know the fans fans really liked it. And that was the first time I think uh, Sevens was on a baseball park. And then, you know, and that's that's whenever it sort of worked. And, and you know, we hosted, uh, you know, two years ago, 2018, um, at AT&T Park in San Francisco, the, the World Cup there. So, and that was, you know, again, a, a big success and, you know, shows you can, you know, maneuver the stadium in, in, in any sort of setting. You're sort of well known as a, as a face of American rugby for quite a long time. And that's in part because you're one of the fortunate ones that's been able to, to travel the world. You, you played in Japan, New Zealand, South Africa, the UK. What, are, uh, what was it that sort of gave you that opportunity or that, that lust for, for travel with, the, with rugby? Because the World Series is, of course, similar to that. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's funny when I think about it. I, um, you know, I fell in love with uh, I fell in love with rugby, not just the sport, not with Image the Lions, but outside of it. Just sort of uh, you know traveling the world and 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 doing it. And I went on my first tour uh, when I was when I was sixteen years old, I think, uh, to England. And, you know, we were there for two weeks. We only played two games. The rest of the time we were checking out castles and we were built by the other team. And it was just a club sport. And, you know, first time in a pub and first time doing all these sort of things and with, uh, you know, traveling with 30 of my good friends. And uh, that's what I fell in love with. And, and, and I just, and I realized the, the, the better I got, um, the more focused on it, the more teams I got invited to and play on uh, and go on these tours. So that was, that's what I really fell in love with is, is the tour aspect, the camaraderie, the, you know, you know, playing against someone hard and then, you know, enjoying their company afterwards and seeing the sights around the world. Cause you know, traveling is a huge passion of mine. Um, and, and like I said before, you know, living different cultures of, of experiencing it, the pe- way people, you know, live and uh, grew up and, and, and trade stories. So, um, you know, that was, that was, that was the main key factor of, of, of picking up the rugby ball and, and, and getting serious in it. And of course the countries that you've been in are, are culturally very different. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, how did a, how did a young Californian pick up a rugby ball? What was the, where was your start point? Was it in high school or, or club rugby? Yeah, it was high school. So I, I followed my brother's footsteps. Uh, you know, Chris, he, he was two years older than I was and he played American football. And he played rugby and I watched him, you know, doing the summers, double days, triple days in, in, in American football. And, and it took so much of his time and they, you know, he only played a few downs, you know, and I just didn't understand it. And, and then he, uh, you know, played rugby and he, you know, trained a couple times a week and, you know, played twice as many games and he's playing the whole time, not start, stop, not stop, stop. And, and, you know, and, and how his coaches were, you know, kind of really it was very military for, for American football and for rugby, it was, you know, just sort of kind and, and, and life lessons and, and sort of what you can be in it. I saw it shaping my older brother and uh, that, that kind of, so I, I skipped the whole route of playing American football uh, and straight into rugby and, and, and soon they put all my eggs in one basket you know, went to university for, you know, a year because my I wanted to travel overseas after after high school. But my parents, you know, they're pretty adamant on me going to university. So I went there, University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, and after that first year, that's when I, you know, when I was 18, 19, that's when I got invited to the, the men's Eagles uh, camps and and uh, started started making uh, making waves. So uh, you know, credit to my parents for, for making me, you know, do uh, some university, uh, you know, hit the books a little bit. But ultimately, my, uh, my passion was to go overseas. And my first stop overseas was, was New Zealand uh, in 2005. And how different was that? So, you know, you imagine you walking in as, a, as a, only a few years before you're playing high school rugby and then you're in, in Reno, Nevada. And then the next minute, I'd imagine what you were walking into a training in North Alba was slightly different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, our, our sevens coach, John McKittrick, um, from down in New Zealand, he, he gave me the opportunity for New Zealand. And he's a great mentor of mine where, you know, he said, I, I can't guarantee you a contract, but I'll get you in front of people and you're going to have opportunities to play. So I played club rugby and uh, ultimately earned, earned a spot to, you know, train with, uh, with Harbour and, and ultimately got contracted, which was, you know, a huge goal uh, to play, you know, and then NPC uh, level was, was some amazing talent. And, and I mean, even just the premiership uh, of, um, of club rugby there, and, you know, a cultural was, was so amazing of, you know, I remember, you know, cleaning the, the sheds, you know, the locker rooms and painting them and playing backyard cricket and having, that was my first time being away for, for Christmas and, and New Year's because I was, you know, you know, playing, playing sport. So, um, made a lot of great friends that are, and I consider family now that I still still in contact with. Um, yeah, so I so I did two years in in New Zealand, um, and that was uh, you know that's when I really learned my trade. And and like we said before, you know rugby rugby there is is more of a, of a religion than it is everything else of, of a culture. So I definitely uh, learned so much over there and, and and developed a lot as a player. And I suppose you're whilst perhaps at that point certainly the rugby history of Japan was very very different 
but culturally another huge shock when you arrive in Japan. I can't imagine everyone that we've spoken to that have ended up playing in Japan or Ben Gollings who we were with last week, he was talking about coaching in China. I've been out in Sri Lanka. He, nothing can quite prepare you for being in, a, in, a, in an Asian country in a very different environment. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And, and then before, before Japan, I was in South Africa for three seasons playing, playing super rugby. So from, from New Zealand, um, came back to the States to, to prepare for the Rugby World Cup uh, in 2007. And then after the Rugby World Cup, I signed down in, um, in, in South Africa and playing Super Rugby and Curry Cup with the Lions. And, uh, you know, that was a huge cultural, you know, change of, wow, I'm in Johannesburg. Like, wow, this is different. This is, you know, something amazing. But, you know, you know, having some great friends that, that took me under the wing and, and teammates that, uh, that showed me, showed me the ropes and, you know, kept me safe, but also, you know, taking me out to the bush and seeing safaris and, and uh, you know, just amazing, amazing land there. Um, and after my, my, after my three seasons there, that's when I went up to Japan. And, uh, you know, it's, it's completely, you know, even more different from New Zealand, more different from California. Went from Africa, Johannesburg, Africa to Tokyo. And, uh, you know, it was, it was it was crazy how how clean and respectful uh, those people are and and you know the country is and the food's amazing and uh, you know and and Eddie Jones is one who brought me you know from from there to Suntory so so being under his uh, sure. as well after that experience with Eddie then <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> you learn a lot about uh, a lot about yourself after spending uh, you know multiple seasons with Eddie. Yeah. You know, you kind of question yourself of, of it, but he, uh, he, he got the best out of us, won a uh, few championships under him and then, uh, and then changed clubs. But, you know, I, I was there a total five years in Japan, which is, you know, a great, a great stint of my professional career. I mean, I, when I left South Africa, I was only going to go for two years, uh, you know, and it was for financial, you know, benefits of it, but I actually fell in love with um, Japan, I fell in love with everything, like I said before. Um, so I ended up staying another three years before, before moving on. And then, uh, yeah, I suppose as, as, as we've, as you've been charting along that side there and your 15s career has grown and your, you know, your life has changed in so many different ways and being in so many different countries, the sport itself is coming back to sevens is rapidly changing as well. We're then beginning to see the likes of Perry Baker and Carlin Isles. And, you know, we move on from the Al Caravelli era to Alex Magleby and we find ourselves with Mike Friday. And, you know, things are really changing in US of rugby. And to the peak that we've seen over the last couple of years, you must be very proud of how far rugby sevens has come since you first were enjoying Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, just putting myself in their shoes of, of the preparation um, those guys are prepared, you know, they're, they're training at the Olympic Training Center full time. They have great coaches. They have great strength and conditioning coaches. Um, you know, a lot of things that we didn't have, we had a lot of love and, you know, into it. And those guys that have passion and everything else, but that only gets you so far. I mean, I remember um, in 2009, the, the Sevens World Cup in, in Dubai, um, we, like, I was playing super rugby. And luckily it fell on a bye weekend for, for me. So I just, you know, I went to the bosses and, and, and Johannesburg and Lions. I said, hey, uh, can I go and play sevens, you know, for the, for the States? And they're like, oh, well, don't you want rest and everything else? And, you know, anytime I had opportunity to uh, put on the USA jersey, I, you know, I always did that through my contracts is, is make sure I had that option to, um, to do that. So I was, I was really keen to, you know, play, play in the in the sevens and and uh you know it, it's it's amazed where the sport has gone and and the athletes as you mentioned before you know we all love our our country we all love playing for it but the commitment and you know the god-given talent but also the resources that have been given uh to those athletes have been uh, been remarkable and and it's so amazing to see you know perry baker carlin isles you know danny barrett and you know really you know take flight and, and, and have, you know, awesome, awesome years and success uh, and of, of making the finals, winning a few tournaments and, and you know, being neck and neck with, with, the, with the world's best. We're going to share some images and, and I, it's interesting that you talk about uh, 
the, the, the culture of rugby and, and how much you enjoyed the sort of different walks you had on life. I mean, you probably got uh, some very different approaches there, but th that probably sums you up, right? Like it doesn't matter whether it's playing for the Austin Huns or is with the 100 World Legends, it was always about people and, and just enjoying the game? Yeah, without a doubt. Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, looking at these images, it uh, brings back some fun times. You know, last year, you know, we made the grand final uh, in 2019 for, uh, for, for the uh, legends you know, or the vets. And, and that, was, uh, that was such a good group of guys. And, and uh, you know, seeing the city, you know, evolve and, and, and meeting the locals that are there and more so there, it's great. And then, uh, you know, again, playing for the States, uh, you know, at, at the World Cup and at other tournaments, you know, around the world is, is, is great. But, you know, that's, uh, that's one thing about rugby that makes it such a, such the best sport in the world is, is, you know, everybody can play. No, there's, it's not, it's not deemed anything else. If you, if you don't want to play, if you want to tackle, play touch rugby, play, play yeah. flag rugby. You know, if, if you, if you want to, you know, just have, play on the weekends and train once or twice during the week, play club rugby, there, there's a spot for you. And, and there's a lock, you know, there's a, there's a clubhouse for you. If you want to have goals, and aspirations of being a professional athlete, you know, it's, it's, it's a grind, you know, you put your body and your mind and, and you this, and you test it to the limits. And then ultimately, if you're, if you're lucky enough and you have that main goal of, of being on that world stage of, uh, you know, playing in a World Cup or Olympics, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, that is, that is, you know, the pinnacle of all. And, and, and I was lucky enough to play on that, uh, th those biggest stages and, and loved every, every minute of it. And, you know, and, but my whole career has gone in a circle, you know, starting rugby as a very amateur, didn't even know that there was professional rugby, got introduced to professional rugby, put all my eggs in one basket, <clears throat> got lost in the bit because, you know, some of it was for financial reasons and I was able to set myself up. Um, but I, I, when I retired and when I was finishing up, it was all about going back to my roots of, you know, travel the world, go to every single, you know, tournament as a fan, as a, you know, you know, water boy, you know, as a, as a vet or whatever else and experience those friendships that you've made, you know, on the field and, and playing in these, you know, uh, you know, legends teams and, and these vets tournaments. And it's guys that I've played against in World Cups, played against in on the World Series sevens and everything else from different countries. If it's going to be Portugal or if it's going to be Spain or Scotland or New Zealand, everything else, those guys that, uh, you know, are, were, were your sort of uh, rivalry are your teammates. And, you know, it's, and you talk about the war stories and, you know, most of the guys talk about how good they were and how fast they were, but, you know, <laughs> I talk about how thirsty I was and how good I was on the dance floor, but, you know, yeah. that's, those are the differences. Well, I, you know, I think that it, it's something we're very proud of here in Dubai that, you know, we put no greater importance on the World Series than we put on the Gulf Open tournament and no lesser importance on the Gulf Open than we do seeing the likes of you, Max Evans, Dylan Armitage, Andy Bilk, BG, like there's a legends team there. It's a proper legends team. And, you know, you're all equal on our fields. And, uh, and tell us a little bit about the 100 World Legends and, and what they stand for. Because I understand that there's, it's a charity that the, tournament, the team was representing in 2019. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, with, with 100 World Legends, you know, uh, with Dave Higgins come, coming through, he does amazing things uh, for the community, you know, small and at large. So, you know, to be part of those and, and to have those dinners and, and to bring all of us in, um, you know, for it, we all buy in, you know, it's sort of, you're not, you're not just there to, you know, uh, you know, partied up and, and, and toss the rugby ball. It's, it's a balanced and how can how can we use our platform to you know better you know uh, if, if it's a kid's life or is it an adult's life or however the case may be uh, you know to give back and and that's why you know especially I've been able to you know say yes to these things is because it's it's the great it's it's, it's so much bigger than the game and and everybody in in that team nobody has an ego everybody's there to you know experience different things and from for myself it's you know have a good time with with good guys give back to the community and ultimately you know be a fan you know and and whenever the inter international team was on you know be a fan of usa so it's uh 
it's 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 great from you know seeing all angles and everything else and and, and just being a fan of it it's an amazing way to look at it and, and and something that i'm sure younger viewers and listeners can take from that that this game is is for everybody whether you reach the highest of the mountain in in the world or whether you're just in the in the clubhouse and you're a legend on a saturday night right no, one hundred percent. What about uh, what about now? Uh, you obviously um, retired from playing, playing a little bit in vets competitions. But you know when needed, when legends teams need you. But what about um, what about Austin Huns? Is that right? And and and, and what's your involvement in, in rugby over in the USA now? Yeah. So so since retiring, um, you know, I was on the board of directors for USA Rugby. Uh, did two two years of of that. Um, you know, with Major League Rugby, I was with the Huns playing when we won the national championship. Uh, and then once the MLR started, we, uh, you know, did a, did a brand change and, and, uh, and changed that. So I was part of that um, whole ordeal. And then I was director of rugby for a bit there, uh, you know, sold, brokered and sold, a, sold the franchise, uh, growing through. Uh, advising uh, teams as well on the business side of, of, of rugby. So, you know, it's, it's been, been crazy how, how much I've, you know, learned and, and seen, but I've never forgotten about the product and the product is the players. So, you know, whenever I'm doing these contracts or whenever I'm dealing, doing it, because I've seen so many in different languages and, and how, how it works, um, I'm always there to, to sort of, you know, if it, even if it's for the States with the Players Association or if it's for, um, you know, our, our athletes with uh, Major League Rugby, you know, help them, you know, guide them through in any possible way. And that's going to be, you know, big and small. So my roles uh, have definitely, you know, been rugby ops, but now it's, I'm switching over to sort of the business side of rugby, which is, uh, is something brand new and, and something that I'm really enjoying. The, uh, it's a, I want to say a challenging time, but obviously USA Rugby have faced, I don't want to get you into the politics or anything, but USA Rugby is facing some challenges. Whilst at the same time, globally, we're seeing MLR um, as a product internationally be of interest as, uh, as players arrive in the US. Is the big name the way forward for the MLR or is it really about investing in American young collegiate rugby players and giving them the opportunity to play professional sport in the US? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, and I think there's something somewhere in the middle. It's definitely a good balance. Um, you know, I always remember playing overseas. Everybody wanted to come over to the States. And I said, no, this, there's no money in the States. There's no professional league. And now that we have three seasons deep in, in a professional league and we're, we're, we're starting to, um, you know, contract some really good players, you know, you know, quality, you know. Um, Chris Robson, right? Like, you know, Chris Robson. Just, right? not, just signed with San Diego. And, <laughs> I mean, San Diego here or LA or New York, they have that, that, that sex appeal for, you know, someone to be over in the States uh, to, to take part. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's with, our, with those MLR franchises, hopefully that they're gonna get a lot of the local guys. Hopefully they can all have an academy. Hopefully they all can see how those professionals approach the game because that, that's ultimately such a huge, huge thing for, for people, you know, boys and girls looking up at their idols, but not just seeing them on TV, but seeing their day in, day out grind. It's, it's no, there's no reason why, you know, Rob Shaw is, you know, one of the best, he's a hard worker, you know, he's a great leader, all those sort of things. And, you know, if, if he's able to spit those sort of kinds of knowledge on, on the youth, that's gonna, that's gonna, you know, form it up. So we definitely want to uh, keep attracting those, those top players. But we also want to have that nice balance because, you know, ultimately, if it's going to be Major League Rugby, how is it going to be benefiting USA Rugby? You know, and 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 it's it's and USA Rugby has its own problems, like like you touched on. But you know, whenever we get out of that that mess, that sticky mess, um, that's whenever we have to, you know, get that get our um, get our insight for the players where they want to go next. How is how what's the, what's the right uh, trajectory coming from high school to college to MLR? to you know our national team because ultimately we, uh, we we want to have our national team you know be a world beater and 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 you weren't tempted to coach and, and give back in that way or are you doing that at a, a local level um I, I i've done a few clinics and 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 amateur 
Um, I'm not so keen right now to do it at, at a professional level just because, you know, I, I enjoy not having the boots on, you know, and, and I think, you know, I, I, for, for myself, I know my, um, you know, my character, you know, I think I'll, I'll wait for the guys that I played with to all retire to before I get into the coaching. Um, you know, they, they know too much dirt on me, you know, for all the, all the things. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, I, again, I, for myself, developing as a business person um, and learning that side of things is is very, very attractive to me to to lear, learn and, and get out of my comfort zone. I think it would have been a pretty easy transition to to be a coach because um, I enjoy the sport and close into it and, and have my uh, have my roles and, and, and what I can what, what I can bring to the athletes. But, you know, personally, I think I need to step away from, you know, boots on the grass, uh, coaching to learn the whole side. Uh, you know, so I learned a lot doing director of rugby, doing all the contracts, doing everything else. So that's uh, that's always been, you know, a big benefit, you know, from that. We always ask uh, people to join us to kind of just take a look back at some of the great players you played with and against and, and specifically on the on the sevens field. And is there any... You know, any players that really jump out at you from, from, from your time when you're playing and then through to, to guys that are playing now? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it was always daunting whenever you're playing, you know, against the likes of Fiji, you know, take this. Or, or I remember my first, uh, my first cap of, you know, uh, against New Zealand in Hong Kong and, and places going nuts. And I was like, wow, this is, this is something else that you know, and, and, uh, and making friendships and, and that's it. So, you know, from the sevens, you know, you have William Ryder, that, that was, you know, oh, same era. coming on the hard, hard out. And that was amazing. You had the likes of, uh, like Czar Lawrence or Muji in New Zealand. Um, man, I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, Ben Gollins was, was, was amazing, you know, kind of going through. Yeah. There's, it's, what about now? What about now when you when you watch the series? Are there anybody? Is that that, that I mean? Like, if we just take Carlin for example, he, he arrived as a sprinter. I think Carlin's a, a legitimate rugby player now. You must be very proud of watching that transition of a of an athlete become a rugby player. Yeah, and, and he is such a great success story, and and uh, who I talk about often whenever I speak about American rugby players and. Because, you, you know, yeah, he has that talent and everything else, but he hasn't been handed anything, you know. He, he is one of the hardest working guys, you know, I know. And, and you know, he's, he's a comp competitor. Um, so if it's, if it's learn and, learn and trade, uh, you know, doing a lot of video review uh, and, and even with the sprint work, you know, how, how focused and, and determined he is to, you know, his, his trait of, you know, and he, he carries that. He's like, I mean, could you imagine having that weight on your shoulder, like the world's fastest rugby player? Yeah. Every time you're out there, you have a target on your back. Like, you, they all know you're going around them, but can you? They all take it softer angle, softer angle, softer angle. But, um, you know, he, he, like, again, such a great success story because of all that hard work. And, and uh, you know, and I've seen him develop so much as a, as a person, uh, you know, and, and into, you know, sort of a leadership role within the team. Um, and, he, and he takes it in stride. Yeah, I mean, it's him and Barry Baker and Madison and Danny Barrett, whether the Olympics is this year or next year, I'm sure that the, uh, the Eagles are in with a shot of, of finally getting him a medal. Do you think that will have a, if that happened, and hey, I think we're, as a as a tier one nation, we never thought it would do, and this is an Englishman saying that. But I think you go with an amazing chart, an amazing coach, an amazing squad. Will it make a big difference to rugby in the USA if 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 a medal was won at the Olympics next year? Yeah, I mean it's it's just all part of it. I mean that's what you know. Unfortunately, like you know, you're putting pressure on these 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 athletes because we know they can do it. You know, and sevens is a funny game. It's a funny shaped ball. So you can't put so much pressure on because sometimes it, it goes to, you know, that, that, that bounce of a ball or however it is. But, you know, whenever rugby got introduced back introduced to, uh, to the Olympics, that made a huge, huge splash. And, and that was really great for the sport and funding and people know it's serious now. And for us to, you know, stand on that podium, you know, with, with a medal, I think that would just, you know, even even educate more people, get more interest. 
So 100%, I think it would be more on the public side and possibly the sponsorship side. Awesome. Well, I know that we would love to welcome you back in Dubai. You epitomize all the great things about this game. We're very proud that you were here last year. We're proud that you were here the first time our stadium opened. So thank you for all of your support, your support of the game. It's hugely appreciated. Our doors are always open. Please come back to Dubai um, and, and enjoy a beer with us and, and enjoy a beer with, with, with all of the people that you've, uh, that you've played rugby with over the years. So thank you ever so much for joining us today, Todd. Definitely. Thanks for having me. I'll definitely be back in Dubai. Brilliant stuff. Thanks, mate.